This is part two of the tribute to Noel Till. Um, uh, the first one contained, my first video contained much more of a personal story. And then I realized, of course, it was going on a bit and that I should divide it up a bit. So this will contain um, some uh, more personal stories about Noel, but um, I would like to focus on his books and on his work. I, by the way, uh, next met Noel Till in, I believe it was 1996, when he came to the Astrological Conference of Great Britain. That was one of my first conferences, I remember, because uh, so I, I, I made a, a beeline down there to see him, and um, I shall come to that later. Um, but the I'd like to start with Noel's uh, birth in 1936 in the United States. He was named Noel Jean Till, or Jean Till, I can't remember how to pronounce it. Uh, but that suggests something of a Dutch name, the J-A-N. It means John, and something like uh, God is um, a fortuitous to you. It's something uh, of that nature. So it suggests something of the Dutch in him. Uh, perhaps this was his father. We don't know much, or I don't know much about that. It's not particularly important to know. Except that um, uh, there were some, he was just bought, born before the war, 1936, so there must have been some chaos and some difficulty in the United States at that time. And uh, I speculate that his father may have been involved in it in some way, I don't know. Uh, but what we do know is that 10 years in 1946, around about 10 years after he was born, there was a bit of a hiatus in his uh, parental marriage. Something went on there in which the father left, and um, this was a difficult time for him. Uh, obviously, the man is growing up to be six foot seven. There is uh, some difficulty around, and there is no, there's a missing father image in the early home. This we'll have a look at his birth chart uh, at another time, and this is stuff is quite well known anyway because he's covered it in a variety of different books, uh, some of his life history, um, showing us how about the, uh, uh, in, particularly in predictions in astrology, he covers some of his history in there, combined with the progressions and transits involved. But it's around about the age of uh, 10, as to say, that the father leaves, and um, I, I believe I'm right in saying that uh, another man enters the, the scene, um, uh, uh, probably a, the, the next uh, a partner of his mother, and um, something happens in him to brighten up his days. I think it was a, a masculine figure that somehow took, um, took a, a real interest in him and maybe there was even a, a financial input because it was soon after that some years after that perhaps about seven that he went to harvard to study social relations psychology um and he was a, a great athlete i think he was interested in baseball but at a certain point i think that with that great height of the weight the knees were always a bit of a problem and he'd often refer to them in uh, as this capricornian problem because capricorn rules the knees uh, sun in capricorn conjunction jupiter in the seventh house uh, speaks to a person who has great expectations of life um and but but for in order to uh, see those in order to carry them out you need a mental figure you need someone to follow because capricorn is 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 uh needs some kind of social approval or it needs approval from a father figure or mother figure or even perhaps from god it is the sense that the, there is a great potential within the individual that needs to grow and develop and with it conjoin conjoining sun, it needs to go to the highest peak that it can do. I think this was behind um, uh, Till's appreciation of the life of President Nixon, too. Uh, uh, another fellow Capricorn uh, with uh, Jupiter conjunction Mercury in his chart. And um, he did a, a, quite a lot of study in principles and practice and various other volumes. Um, ab about Nixon's life, uh, who I think he appreciated despite the downfall. 
There was something of, about building up from scratch and making something of the life that you've been given, making something great about it, um, trying to uh, elevate yourself in some way to climb up that uh, dodgy mountain of success. And it involves a climb and great effort. And I believe that uh, Noel put, put, Noel put great effort into his climb up uh, the ladder of what he deemed to be success and which was success. Um, their success is a difficult um, dimension to talk about in many ways because sometimes one doesn't have to uh, make success as as uh, as a as in terms of public acclaim or fame as Noel Till did. I think Till saw a success in terms of social achievement, money, financial success, and getting to the top of profession, typical of a Capricorn. Although success in a different way can be in, in a sense of maturity without the need for public acclaim. These two would vie in him, I think, but uh, in, in general, he saw level, level of development in terms of how a success for you were in a social climate or a social milieu or culture. So he goes to Harvard University and studies with Paul Tillich, various social psychologists in there, comes out with a degree in social psychology. It was there that I think he was introduced to quite a lot of so, um, uh, theory. One theory in particular, which he linked to astrology later on, was by Henry Murray. Henry Murray was a great psychologist who uh, created personology and uh, very similar, very much connected to Jung and the idea that the person would develop through a series of internal needs which were pressed for fulfillment and the environment in which you were born would press you uh, in, into bringing out those potentials. Now, this was developed further much in his book, Holistic Astrology, uh, which was uh, brought out in, let's see, yes, 1979-1980, uh, which is a further delineation of his previous work, The Principles and Practice of Astrology. So this, uh, the reigning need, of course, of the personality was to be involved, was to uh, push forward into a belongingness. This is why I think Till used to link that, the, the moon, with the reigning need of the personality. It is not to do with personality fulfillment so much as the press of the environment upon the individual to bring things out. In, uh, in other ways of interpreting that moon, we can often see it as adaptation to the environment, the emotional immediacy of uh, belonging somewhere, feeling that you're safe or unsafe. The moon represents obviously the mother, the home environment and all that canon of symbolism relating to the moon. But we can see that if you belong in the environment, that is your mother. That's what's going to take care of you. And it will press you to fulfillment, a kind of environmental belonging. So we can see the, the this is, is still within the symbolism of the moon within uh, Till's astrology. Uh, so he's he's studying i think I, I think when i studied volume five of the principles and practice of astrology which was where he brings in the dimensions of psycho psychological theory he briefly looks at freud uh, kurt lewin which is a gestalt psychology very fascinating field of psychology uh, um, also uh, jung uh, he touched upon Jung, but more principally, he, he, he carries forward the theories of Henry Murray uh, and um, or utilizes them for, to great effect to apply them to this uh, to his astrological system. The square aspects become tensions or presses for fulfillment and uh, the uh, aspects, be the uh, transits become the development of uh, oneself or the uh, to bring out things of oneself over a period of time. As we can see, this is a fundamentally new kind of astrology in the 1970s. Liz Green, who was also uh, coming up at that time in 1976, I think published Relating, and she was on. She was uh, talking about um, uh, Jungian psychology. Um, uh, but nevertheless, Till was bringing in a very practical element. What he wanted to do was to teach people to be creative. 
um, he was less interested in the theory of, of, of psychology, but merely used it as a, as a kind of framework on which to build an idea on how, about how to interpret a horoscope. And these ideas could be uh, uh, communicated quite simply and then applied. So uh, in that book, in the, uh, he also uh, underscores Alfred Adler. And I believe that um, a lot of his work is based upon the theories of Adler, who was a social psychologist. Um, he was one of the depth psychologists stemming from a pupil of, uh, as a pupil of Freud, the same as Jung was, and Wilhelm Reich uh, and Alfred Adler, I think, there's, and Jung, of course, all pupils of Freud in the early part of the, ninth, uh, uh, the 20th century. Um, but they branched off into their own fields of endeavour and Adler particularly saw one's involvement with society as a, as a, as not as a cure exactly, but the, the environment is where we live. Uh, Till calls this an awareness of the outer environment and its interplay with the inner environment. That's where that book Holistic Astrology comes in. It's the interplay of inner and outer it's quite a good book that because it not only summarizes uh, all of what he's uh, spoken about before, but uh, shows a, a, a system of detailed cases in which um, he, he further amplifies the psychological system of social involvement and the, the emphasis on bringing out our stuff, uh, bringing out our potentials in life uh, in, in, in order to uh, progress ourselves along a course of cultural maturation. So that Capricorn, that desire to instruct, the desire to be a, a, a paternal um, a guide, a mentor figure. And I believe his father was a mentor figure to him, saw him in a different light and gave him the opportunities that he needed to flourish. Now that son Jupiter in the seventh house as also till had been various uh, quite, quite lucky at a certain phase he made his luck of course um, but there was some luck uh, I think it was around about 23 maybe 22 he went to New York after um, uh, uh, from college he it was he was married then he had a child then uh, but then he had a flash of inspiration in which he wanted to become an opera singer this brought in a different dimension to his life. It, uh, it had been very involved in psychology, advertising, uh, um, uh, this, this kind of PR uh, stuff that he studied. I think he uh, hit the ground running with an excellent job and a good wage, managed to move to New York, but then was hit by this other urge to, uh, to be an artist. Uh, this dramatization of the inner world could that you could do in opera and so he set about becoming an opera singer typical of the uh, I suppose of Sun Jupiter he could see himself in the big lights he could see himself um, uh, uh, dressing up on the grand opera stage and touring everywhere going everywhere typical of that Sun Jupiter great expectations of oneself and everything else it's as if it's a, a, a dynamism, uh, a, 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 a looking out into the future to see where you could be. This was also a great feature of his um, astrology to try and bring to life some picture, some forward projection of what you could do, which, by the way, in uh, volume six and volume seven, the uh, volume six is about um, uh, progression, progression systems and volume seven is about it, what is called integrated transits. And the two systems are, are, are taught as a way of not predicting the future, but as projecting those placements that, that, that are coming up into the future and asking you this a very important question. What are you going to do with it? The symbols suggest things, they show things, they show periods of development, but how can we project you into them to make the best possible uh, choices and to, to promote you, if you like, in advance? 
Saturn, of course, he called the architecture advanced and used a, a great deal of um, skill with that based upon the work of Grant Louis. The Grant Louis um, uh, to do with the cycles of Saturn, particularly uh, uh, around the angles. We may get a chance to have a look at that in uh, Till's own chart. Uh, it's not my intention to give a, a, a full appraisal of his um, uh, theories and ideas, although they are in me and so they will spring to mind when I'm talking about his work. So in moving forward then, in when he was 23, he had this idea about becoming an opera singer. And this is where the luck came in. He pressed his luck, he got a famous opera teacher, we don't know which which one it was, and he, he worked day and night in, in order to make this happen, which was of course uh, one of his dynamisms, one of his uh, uh, express uh, feelings that he would give. What are you going to do? What do you try to make something happen in the future? This was what was behind the dr dramatization in every performance of, of, of uh, an astrology reading, trying to invoke uh, the, uh, an imaginative future of what could be, of how you could be. Later on, this was uh, shown after he wrote uh, Synthesis and Counseling and Astrology in his master course. Um, he wrote, uh, be the best astrologer you can be. Uh, it has been um, humorously I suppose and uh, as humor, humorously said about Capricorn the goat that G-O-A-T means is an acronym called the greatest of all time G-O-A-T and indeed it seems the sign of Capricorn have their eye on greatness have their eye on fulfilling the best possible potential in life to take it from the bare beginnings of potential and transform what is there through the fish the fish fish side of the sign is that which um which is potential only it's swimming around in the sea it's unfulfilled it's 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 thoughts it's dreams it's fantasies but the capricorn side is the lifting up out of the uh, out of the self and to ground it to make it real to make it solid and then take it to the top of the mountain so that you are overseeing the um the, the uh, overseeing the world almost master of the world in a way master of your own uh, uh, di uh, human dimensions. Sometimes, of course, that can get a little bit grandiose. One can uh, place oneself at the top of the mountain and that can be a little bit too prideful. Maybe there was a bit of that in Till too. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, he had a sense of wanting to produce a better, bigger, more creative future, both for himself and all of his clients. So he goes into the story as well known that he goes to an opera uh, a competition, the America Opera uh, competition and wins it. He only had two, uh, two arias to sing and somehow it slipped through as a curious thing in the auditions in which they, he sung the first one. And the second one that he that they chose was the other one that he knew. He didn't. He, he had to put eight on a list, but they chose the right one. He was called back and uh, or uh, uh, tongue the barber of Seville, I believe it was. And interestingly enough, by luck would have it, that was the opera that was going to be done in Italy. So he already knew the part. He he didn't know this, of course, and this is the luck of Jupiter sometimes. Of course, they rang back a few days later and said that he'd won. This would mean uh, around about uh, 20, uh, well, whenever it was, perhaps 90, early 1970s. Uh, sorry, that would be late 1968, 69. Uh, he went then to Germany and toured various places around the world, Spain, and uh, uh, I think he came back to Canada at one point and then was in Germany for, for, for a little while, of course, with the Great Ring Cycle. His uh, favourite role was, of course, Wotan, the King of the Gods. I'm sure he was absolutely marvellous at it, coming out under the spotlight seven feet tall, with this gigantic gigantic um, uh, 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 robes on of all pervasive colours, 
king of the castle coming out and producing uh, some form of uh, dramatics uh, in which uh, he would obviously take centre stage. I'm sure that life in him became uh, a fulfilment of, of a sense of his own grandiosity, a sense of his artistic endeavour to produce drama, all fulfilling, of course, the uh, moon in Leo in the third house, that communicator, the singer, um, the, the, the person that uh, wanted to bring life to the uh, imaginative uh, and the artistic. Of course, he met Zoltan Mason in Amer in, uh, in New York too, and uh, on that meeting, uh, the, the meeting is well known, but uh, he was very impressed by Zoltan Mason, not necessarily by the reading that Mason gave, but by his presence. Mason told him that um, Till was destined for great things in astrology, and although uh, Till was a little bit cynical at that time, he took that to mean that. He took it to say that uh, perhaps that was true and we see in Till's horoscope that 28, 27, 28 degree Leo uh, uh, come up. Uh, I think it's on the node, I'm not sure, but it's something to do with the astrologer's degree. At least Alan Leo called it that because it was near his ascendant. So he goes to um, uh, Italy to do all that and a few years later towards his Saturn return his back gives out. He has to have a major operation on it around about the Saturn return and this put him out of the opera scene for quite some time. But it was after that operation in recovery that he wrote Astrology as Identity. Astrology as Identity by Noel Till and here is the book. Here's the famous book cover, which he so loved. Um, and uh, this was uh, written, he said, in anyway, in nine and a half days. And I believe him. It's a tour de force of clarity. He reintroduces the symbolism of Saturn as an architectural advance on how to, uh, in a way, promote your own uh, uh, ambition through the uh, through its, its cycle to its own place as well as uh, the angles um, uh, uh, the, the, the other astrologers that I mentioned Grant Louis Astrology for the Millions was one of the books that he, he, um, he used as a framework for, for these ideas but one thing that I took from astrology uh, um, as identity um, in there is his essential philosophy um, and uh, Tillich isn't in there, but he he conceives his identity as being all, as astrology, as a, again a picture of one's totality as an identity, and it was our task to fulfil it, almost like the humanistic psychology coming through during the 1970s too, self-actualization. Abraham Maslow, which is also one of the people that he includes, I think, in his book, a bit in the hierarchy of needs from viscerocentric to uh, belongingness needs, self-worth, and then the, the hierarchy of needs the individual eventually leads to a sense of self-actualization and eventually transcendence. So he took a lot from early psychologists and built it into his own system of astrology in, in, in a very convincing way and goes about uh, eventually when he's healed, he sends this book to Llewellyn and uh, what happens is uh, they're so impressed by it, they offer him a different contract to write a series uh, which was eventually enabled the principles and practice of astrology. So they delayed the publication of uh, Identity until 1974. It was in 1972 that this contract uh, to develop a series of 12 books uh, 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 detailing a complete uh, education curriculum for astrological learning. Volumes 1 to 3 detail the uh, introduction to the signs and planets and basic houses, the house symbolisms. Uh, derivative house systems <laughs> is interesting, including on there, uh, and also a revamp of uh, the sun-moon blends. 
These are the basis. The sun moon blend symbolism form the basis of the chart. The uh, 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 energies which are central to the personalities will fulfill, and everything revolves around that. So you have the basic analysis of sun moon, and then all of the aspects to them, and those aspects which don't have any uh, 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 connection to the sun moon are seen as uh, different dimensions of the personality which tend to splinter off talks a lot about this and it's a good an analytical system so one to three is basically about calculation and then the early early stuff early uh, information about signs planets and houses and uh, eventually volume four on how to put them together aspects are contained in volume four and uh, as well aspect configurations uh, missing elements all of that stuff and he does profiles of various people to take us through volume five includes the uh, psychological theories that i've mentioned six is about progressive systems and he sees he sees rather than pre pre uh, prediction he sees as astrology as projecting forward into the future so he's all the time looking at a placement in an astrological chart, seeing when it, where the potential is and projecting into the future and enabling the client to somehow project a new future as well. What possibilities are involved in the future placements? Volume 8 is interesting. Uh, that is a depth of analysis of di distinct charts and in and also introduces the idea of orrery astrology uh, it's a wonderful I introduction he does a, an orrery chart he says he's not that good at orrery but nevertheless this was my first encounter in it and i took that up um uh, uh, like a like a duck to water later uh, when i read mark Edmund jones book on it as well um, after that, he produces the principles and practice of astrology guide, and uh, this is this is it here, uh, a rather a large tome, and in it is a very interesting uh, a series of um, uh, 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 organised uh, lessons for a college curriculum course. But I want to read out something in in about when he gets to volume eight, because this is important, I think. Because of the force of personality of Noel Till, and it comes across in his courses and in his teaching that this is one of the ways to learn astrology. But he warns, he warns students uh, very importantly in this chapter, Analysis and Depth on page 428. He says, Indeed, these cases are conceived and fulfilled in the style of the author. In studying these cases, the student will want to imitate the author's style, perhaps to an excessive degree. Of course, he's, he's confident in his own ability to show astrology and this uh, to uh, draw a sense of, wanting, uh, of students wanting to imitate him. But this wasn't what he was on about. I mean, the, the moon in Leo is interested, yes, in in, in, in showing off, in uh, fulfilling a kind of Im I emotional recognition uh, and fulfilling the, uh, the imaginative, as, uh, very uh, emotionally artistic and dramatic and creative. But he says this, in trying to imitate, the student is in danger of losing the foundations of his or own, his or her own personal style. And throughout this guide, it has been stressed that the astrologer's personal style of analysis and way of seeing the world are a product of his or her own horoscope. That astrological service to another human being is actually an expression or an extension of the astrologer's own identity. Here he is saying to us, please learn from me. Do this. This is my expression. This is what I have to say. Uh, and so throughout the whole courses, what we get is a sense that he's trying to bring out the best in the astrologer to find what it is your style. Follow this as a guideline. Follow this as a framework of interpretation. But don't necessarily follow me. Become your own. Find out what creativity you have. Use your own uh, presence, your own information, your own stuff and find your own style with given the framework that I have developed. 
From this develops holistic astrology, which is a great volume of inner and outer environments. He introduces the idea that uh, people are either victimized by their environment, they are um, uh, they either reflect their environment in many ways don't become unique but simply part of the cultural canon of what is usual or you can seek to change your environment these three processes were intrinsic to that book and i think they're very helpful as key clues it's because when a client comes to see you are they victimized by circumstances do they merely reflect the um, the cultural dimensions or the parental dimensions, the expectations, or there, are they seeking to change their environment in order to become unique and individual? Till uh, categorize people into these three things in order to uh, bring some kind of um, concrete dimension to it, the orientation towards counselling. Volume 9, I've covered Volume 10, Our Techniques in Objectification and Astrological Counselling. Volume 11 uh, was uh, uh, Occultism and Mundane Astrology, Particular Dimensions. I think he, he draws upon the work of Mark Edmund Jones in that quite, uh, quite considerably. And then his own fascination with, with mundane uh, produces some predictions and so on. It's a very good introduction to the subject, I may say. In... Um, in the uh, volume 12 he calls it times to come and there introduces a different style of thought different uh, very interesting th things to do with marcel proust and so on, in order to finish off the volume series he produces the principles of wisdom practice guide after that and a very interesting little volume that i would like to finish with here for now before i get on to the other works it's this one the missing moon it's called the case of the missing moon and other case studies here he enters a fantasy world of uh, different charts and uh, he introduces the element of play so typical of the leo leo in the third house produces uh, a, a series of vignettes which you follow and uh, he creates a character called michael mercury astrologer and uh, and his uh, assistant Callisto who is one of the moons of Jupiter I think anyway it's for me this takes astrology into a, a field of imaginative play less off the analysis and more on the symbology as some great charts in here in which I think he probably follows the idea of uh, one of Alistair Crowley's novels uh, which was called The Mysteries of Simon If in which there are case studies or difficult things to to fathom out so each one here a, a, a it draws on a particular horoscope and a, a, and a mystery in the horoscope that he has to fathom out Simon If was a psychic investigator confronted with a series of problems that he has to work through in a, psych, a psychic manner this one is, 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 is as I say, a, a series of astrological stuff. And you learn a lot about the symbology of the chart of the uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a chart. I think it's an underrated book, a, an imaginative book, a fun book. And it shows the creative dimensions that you can have with astrology other than analysis and the working out of various meanings. I know this book backwards in the case of the case of the missing moon, um, the plundered plutonium um, there's a, even one about uh, something about cinema and uh, a czar off and shows his uh, interest in, in magic and conjuring i think in the early days i think you know quite a lot about that he didn't talk about it much but from that book you can see a, a series of influences in his early life well i'd like to stop there because uh, for this one because it brings us up to roughly 19, uh, uh, 90, uh, 90, 1918, 1990 and um, uh, it's from there there's a small break uh, uh, for some reason and uh, it's not until 1990 around about that that we get into another series of books so for now i hope that you found that informative